In 2007, I incorporated, I started an LLC. I followed all the advices to say, if you really want to charge money, you want to quit your day job, you need to become a cor incorporated. So I started my LLC. And um, you know how they say when you start a business, don't expect income in the first two, three years, or maybe five years sometime? You guys know that? Are you guys here? Because all I see is light. <laughs> OK, they're here. You guys are aware of that, right? If you don't, that's what they say. If you start a new business, save some money before because you're not going to see income for the first few years. Well, they were right. The first year, my, my income was n minus $900. So the $30,000 that I totally grossed, invoiced, and made, I spent about $1,000 more on gear. All in this store, probably. <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> um, but. WPPI really changed it. I followed all those leads, all those tips, all those business advice they give you. It's not just how to take a better photo. That you have a whole year to practice and do. WPPI for me was really about learning how to run a better business. Okay? It's like what you guys are doing here, basically. You guys are here to learn, right? That's education. That's the best investment you guys can make. When I was a kid, the biggest thing, the, the number one thing that a kid wanted to be when they grew up is a pilot in the Air Force. That was the number one goal where I come from. And um, I have a friend that I met him in, in a reunion a few years ago. And he became one. When we were 18, he became a pilot in the Air Force. And I saw him and I said, what do you do now? He says, oh, I fly commercial flights. I make a ton of money. But I hate my job to death. I'm bored, out of my mind. And I'm looking at what I do. Yeah, I hold a camera every day. But I meet new people every day. I, I'm with people on their happiest days of their lives. I mean, unless you shoot funerals. <laughs> or snapshot or heart attack, you really are in a good position. So take advantage of that. Why not monetize it? Why not turn it into a business the right, the smart way? So hopefully I can help you with that today. You want to be a professional photographer? Be a professional person. Be a good person with your clients. You will do good. You hear a lot of people going up really fast and going down really fast because they forgot how to be professional. So just remember that and the rest will come, OK? Um, this is what we're going to talk about today in bullets, and then we'll expand each one. Impact marketing, something that I don't want to say that I coined the phrase, but I've really tweaked it and developed it to a science, at least in my studio, the way I practice my business. I'm going to run it by you, OK? Um, we're going to talk about client consultation, how to create a perfect client consultation. Because believe it or not, that's where you're going to sell. Not on your website, not nowhere else, not on the magazine advertisement. When you meet the client, that's your opportunity to close the deal. And that's what we're going to talk about, how I do it, and hopefully how it could help you. OK? We're going to talk about how my style developed and evolved, and how my whole business developed. Because yes, I have a studio right now. But seven years ago, I didn't have anything. So I want to show you how it evolved, how it got to where it is. It's really important to understand that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about social media. The reason I say it is because Facebook is the source of 90% of my referrals. Very simple. Yes, you can create a business without Facebook. But if you could do it better with, why not? Just a thought. I'm not going to make you. Just kidding about that. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, websites, blogs, SEO. I know, it's boring. We want to hold a camera. We want to shoot. We want to know how to make money. Who the hell wants to know anything about a website, right? It's an integral part of your business. If you don't know how to do all that, let someone else do it. But it has to be done, OK? It has to be done. Everything you guys wear, everything, was bought in a store. Website is the storefront of your business, OK? Um, and if we have time, we're going to talk about pricing. I put it last because it's really something that I added to this class. But it is the hottest topic. Because everybody gets everything when it comes to pricing. They just don't know how to price themselves. What what's my value? What's my hourly? How do I price a package? How do I make a package? How do I make a client want to upgrade? We'll talk about that, OK? This is what I think about, impact for me, what impact marketing is. It's about getting client, first of all, to want to meet you. Remember, when they meet you is when they close the deal, when you close the deal, not before. I mean, yes, one of you might say, hey, I booked a wedding on the phone. Yes, I booked a wedding on the phone. But 95% of the weddings I book are in person. So that is where it needs to be done, OK? I want to get a client to really, really want to meet me. And how do I do that? 
I intrigue them. I show the best photos I can. I impress them with the best possible portfolio I could imagine. I don't just put every little dog photo I take with my phone on Facebook. It's important that your, your website looks credible, that people find you, they find reviews about you. Anybody here gets reviews online? On websites like Yelp, Wedding Wire, Angie's List, anyone? Don't be shy, just say no. <laughs> you should. If you shot someone and you know you did a good job, send them an email, say, hey, would you mind reviewing me on Google business page? It's a free page that everybody should have, or Yelp, or anywhere you want, okay? All right, how do we get clients to come and see us? Because what is the number one challenge when someone actually calls you? To get a meeting, you're right. To get them off the phone without giving them all the information. To set up a meeting. How do we do it? It says it right there. Do not give prices online or over the phone. Anybody here says uh, my prices are so and so and here are my packages online? Please raise your hand. I would like to slap you. <laughs> I'm not gonna slap you, you look stronger than me. Don't put it online. So what does the, the client do next? They love your work, let's assume. What do they do? Come to see you. Well, who said that? You? Way too fast. You're not just gonna go into a store. You can't see a price. You're gonna call, right? Or you're gonna send an email. Don't you get those emails? Hi, I'm getting married on September 2nd, 2012. What's your prices and availability? You guys get that? Yeah. Not even a hi. <laughs> not how was your trip, how was your weekend, have a nice day. Just prices and availability. But I say congratulations. That is the most important thing to say. Congratulations on your engagement. I would love to discuss with you my wedding photography, but I can't do it over the phone or an email because I would like to show you my work. I would like to listen to all the details about your wedding. Invite them to meet you. Whatever they say, say I will meet you in person. And the real, the deal breaker, the positive deal breaker for me is to say I can't send you packages because I don't have packages. I customize it for you. I make clients like me before they even know who I am because they see other stuff I do. They see that I have a kid. They see that I like to photograph food, that I photograph some models and fashion. So I make sure that they're exposed to my personality even before they come to see me. Clients come to meet me, they say, we saw on Facebook you have a beautiful kid. Thank you. It's from my wife. <laughs> okay. Um, get yourself perfect, perfect emails. And I'm not saying start spending money to have a New York Times writer write your replies to the client. Write a good reply, run it by a few people. If this looks good, just copy it into a notepad and every time you have a client that sends you emails, just send beautiful emails. Because sometimes we rush and we forget to say congratulation. We forget to say thank you. While you're in a meeting with a client, you need to listen to everything they say, even if you don't care. But I do want to know how many girls are going to be there and if you work, which hotel you're going to and which caterer. You know why? Because when you listen to those stories, as you gain more experience and you've shot more, even as a second shooter, oh, the W Hotel, yeah, I've been there. Here's a photo from the W. Oh, you're getting married in Chevy Chase. Look, we took this photo by the Chevy Chase. Here's an idea for you. The more you listen to your client, the more you can connect with them and relate to their, the details in their wedding, even if you haven't done it yet. I really start showing them what I want to sell them. My presentation doesn't have single file of posed family formal photos, which we have to do in every wedding. I've never shot a wedding without doing it, don't get me wrong, but that's not what I'm trying to sell. People who come to me come because of these things. So I show people what I want to sell, okay? And I recognize my style and I introduce my style to them. Here's examples of what I want to sell. That's what I show couples. I have this photo. This is the same photo you saw with the bride sitting posed. I did this with her in the staircase at the W in two minutes with a few speed lights and pocket wizards. That's what I show in my studio. I have a, a canvas in the studio that's roughly almost the size of this entire screen of this photo with a nice spotlight on it. So yes, educate your clients. Uh, when I meet with my clients after I show the presentation, I start telling them, I start 
drilling in their, in their mind, reminding them what, what's so important about hiring me. Why do you want to hire me and not him, him, or her? Why me? And I tell them, I start telling them about everything I do, all my business practices. For example, my crew. Just so you guys know, any photographer that shoots with me, any second shooter, is a full-time professional, which if I break my leg that day, they not only have the gear, they shoot in my style and my standards. I would trust them with my cameras. That's the level of my photographers. And a month before their wedding, you, you can meet them. You can look at their website, look at their portfolio, and, and verify everything that I've said. And I leave it to about a month or two before the wedding. Okay? Um, I talk about lighting and posing. I tell them that photos like what they, what they just saw are not snapshots. They're not just go over there, play, play with each other by the tree, and I'll take a photo. They're carefully crafted. Posed, posing and lighting is key. And that starts introducing to my clients already in the consultation that the engagement photo is not going to be about jumping in the park. It's going to be about listen carefully and pose because you're going to look like rock stars. This is something that sounds like really not a smart thing to do. Agreed? Why would you do that? Have you ever heard a car salesman tell you to go to the dealership across the street to try and get a better price? No, because they know you'll get a better price because the cars have the same quality. This Ford uh, F-150 is exactly the same as the other dealerships Ford F-150. What the difference is that with me, I believe that my photos impress clients enough and my personality really seals the deal, not because I have the most charming personality, because I promise clients quality and consistency. Very simple. Plus the fact that I'm not a creep helps a lot. They want to see something they the bride doesn't mind, oh, I, I can see this guy walking into my bridal suite on the most nerve-wracking day of my life. That's okay. We spent two hours, very nice conversation. So I will tell every person at the end, even if they have their checkbook ready and they want to sign, here's a deposit, please save the date. No, I have never taken a deposit the day off, even they offer me. Go home, think about it. It's a lot of money, think about your investment. And definitely go see other photographers. Go see what they offer. Hopefully after the two hours I spent with the client, and I tell them after the two hours we just spent, I hopefully educated you enough, and I don't say it in a condescending way, but I tell them, I hopefully you're educated enough into knowing what are the right questions to ask the next wedding photographer. So do you give licensing to the images? Oh yeah, but only four by six. Oh, well he gives full res. Do you watermark your images? Yes, of course. Well, I don't. Do you give this? Everything. What about the albums? Who makes your albums? Oh, you use that cheap company. No wonder they're so cheap. I don't want cheap. I want high end. After the consultation, do you always get that feeling that you haven't heard from the client for about a week and you kind of email them and say, hey, what's up? I'm still available. I'll give you a thousand dollar discount. Don't do that. Have patience. Don't rush the clients. It looks so bad. Create yourself those perfect emails templates that are not impulsive, that are simply professional and calm. Hey, it's been a week since we met and I just wanted to follow up to see if there's any questions I can answer. If you didn't hear back, they booked someone else. Move on. It's like a girl going with another guy. Move on, dude. Okay? It doesn't help to stay stuck. Same thing with clients. Okay? Simply have patience. Extremely important. And remember, create yourself those template emails. Okay? Create them copy and paste into a notepad. I have about 50 of those that I tweak every now and then, but I save them and I copy and paste and I just change the date of the wedding or the, the thank you for coming on Thursday, maybe it was Wednesday, nice meeting uh, you and your fiance Joe and I just change those names, change those dates and the little details. We're going to talk about style and evolution or how your style evolves, how mine did. Um, I haven't been shooting like this from day one. I used to be able to tell a couple, hey, do me a favor, just go over there, just lean on it and just pretend you're doing something and I'll capture whatever comes out. Look at this photo. Everything is perfectly placed, the lips are perfectly placed, and the lighting. We used one of these here, which we're going to demonstrate in the next class. We had a flash behind the wine rack and another flash here. So you see a nice little rim light and hair light and kickers and shine from the shoulder. The photo is three-dimensional. 
Don't do the same thing you do over and over and over. Tweak it. Learn how to light better. I've learned how to light only three years ago. How to use off-camera lighting in receptions. And you'll see the difference. Um, but I've learned how to improve myself over time. And you know what's, what's the beauty of all that? I learn every day something new. I'm not kidding, every day. I look at photos on Facebook. I have almost 5,000 friends on Facebook. So I see, a, I have feed going on not constantly. About 3,000 of those people are professional photographers. So I'm, you can imagine my feed is consisted mostly of photos. And I see beautiful stuff and I clip it immediately and say, okay, I like this pose. Next wedding, I'm gonna try that. I like the way they lit this photo. How do I light it? I ask questions, I ask other professionals. I'm not shy. So always improve your techniques, okay? And since this is not a lighting class, this is just how to better your business by making your photos look better. That's why I'm doing this, okay? Um, I get inspired, really. I, I think I just said that a second ago. But the best photos I've ever taken were simply by being inspired. You saw that photo of the South Asian, the Indian bride, the beautiful photo that I, it's one of my favorite photos, shot it like five years ago. Um, I shot that photo a day after WPPI. I went to the conference, I came back pumped like someone just shot adrenaline up my butt, and I went to shoot a wedding, and I, I, I seriously have an, a, a whole sample album from being a second shooter, okay? So that's what I'm saying, when, that's what I mean when I say get inspired. Follow people you adore, look at their work, guess what, it's not copying, it's not. Let's move on, I'm gonna show you some of my work. Photo from five, six years ago. Hey, just lay on the couch. I'll take a photo. I don't know how to light, so let's make it a sepia and call it artistic. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do now. This is not a boutique hotel. This is someone's house. I walked into the room. It had a table from here to the other end. From here to the other end. A table that weighs 600 pounds. I, I got a couple of the guys and my crew to empty the room. It's someone's house, and we pose them. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about viral marketing. Of course, this is you know Facebook, Twitter, Google+. The way I use uh, Facebook is, again, remember what I told you? I try to create impact on a client, which means I shoot someone's wedding. I shoot Jerry's wedding, Jerry and his fiance. And the next day, they wake up in the morning. What do, what do they see? Jerry wakes up, runs. It's, our, it's the first morning after the wedding. They haven't even left to their honeymoon, but he goes to see Facebook. And what does he see? He sees a million dollar photo of him and his fiance in their beautiful wedding party from the wedding. What does his fiance do first thing? Anyone? She, tag, she likes the photo. She comments. She tags all of her bridesmaids. He'll tag all of his groomsmen, right? What do I do next? when I wake up about 2 a.m., 2 p.m. I friend all of the people they tagged. What happens at that point? I have new agents on Facebook, new fans. Do you know every year, two, three weddings I book are based on bridesmaids from previous weddings or friends of bridesmaids? And that's directly. I'm not talking about 90% of my business referrals are Facebook. Let me tell you something about this photo. It doesn't really match the caption of, uh, well, it does, sorry. My point is, only post a million dollar photo. That is where I was going with this, not this. This is a good photo. It's got everything, the bride, the groom, the dogs on the floor, the kid, the priest, all the groomsmen, all the bridesmaids, and the back of the parents. Is it a good photo? Yes. Is it a million dollar photo? No, it's not. So I wouldn't post it. Okay, only a million dollar photo is what's going to make that impact. I'm going to be with you in one second. I got like a momentum here. Here's an example. Shot this photo under 24 hours and had over 100 likes on Facebook and a gazillion comments. Okay, one image, just one, not a gallery, not a link to the blog post yet, just a single image. Here's another one, the wedding from just two, uh, last week, last Sunday. Shot it at 104 degrees, God help me. Um, posted it at 9.30 in the morning, and I got back home at 6 p.m. in the evening, and it had over 110 likes on Facebook. And, um, and only one image, just one. 
that no one saw except for the couple because the wedding party wasn't with them on the boat, just me. So that's what it does. That those photos don't, I don't have to talk a lot about them, but that shows you the power of Facebook. I'm going to show you a few more examples in a second. Um, the idea is to try to get a group photo though, not just a couple, a group photo, because that's when you do that first view of the wedding, first sneak preview with as many possible fans that you could generate from it. Because those will be your future referrals. So here is an example. This photo gets the most buzz in my studio. I don't know if you saw in the screenshots, there is a 70 inch canvas of this photo, bigger than this TV hanging on the wall. And everybody says, how did you do it? How did you stop traffic? How did you get so many people in it? They don't know that I shot 102 frames and I sent 27 of them to a Photoshop artist who charged me a thousand bucks to stitch to make sure that almost every person is visible. What you're seeing now is the one image. This is the single shot, the day after. But in my studio, and I'll, I'll pull it up the photo at the end if we have time, I'll show you the difference between this one and the other one. But look how many people are tagged. Every single person in this. Two years ago, still friends with me. Still there, because I just screenshot it not too long ago, and they're still there as links. Here's another example. Regardless of the photo, the bride's dad, a 69-year-old, sorry, 79-year-old person, signed up on Facebook just to say thank you. <laughs> it's not about me, it's about the impact that Facebook put in our lives, in our business. You need, remember, use as much as you can of Facebook, not just to brag about your work, about how hard you work. Just make some laughs and connect with your clients. This is from a wedding, and that's me, and that's the groom. And didn't get a laugh, I thought it would. <laughs> um, the idea behind this photo is to show you just all the connection with the client. This is the client, comments, comments, comments. We had a conversation, it was funny, because when he came to pick up the photos, he wasn't mad that the weather was about, I don't know, 30 degrees and we missed a big portion of his portraits because it sucked. All he remembered is how much fun we had at the wedding. It wouldn't, it wouldn't happen if you booked someone over the phone and you mailed them a disc, right? Agreed? Good. That's, um, that's a very happy groom who decided to pick me up for the photo. And I'm only mad about my associates for capturing those, but I had to bring it in. And uh, here's another interaction with client via Facebook. Um, I deliver my photos on a CD that's custom case. I print it, I label it, I brand it to me, and I name, put the client's name on it. So I took a couple, and I sampled with a few photos in the studio of the product that just came in from the lab. And I tagged them in it, and the bride loved it. Everybody loves it. They see that there's interaction. They're not, I'm not a vendor. I don't want to be perceived as a vendor. I want to be their friend. I want to be an artist. I want to be their friend. I want to be uh, everything but just a plain vendor of, here's your check, give me the invoice. Here's the deposit, give me the CD, okay? And those things help. Those things promote that thing for me. Um, in every blog post, I try to include a photo of me and my crew with the couple. Again, connection. It'll be harder for couples to be mad at you if you're such good friends with them. Because admit it, we always forget at least one thing to do in a wedding. Oh, we forgot the detail on the shoe. Wow. So uh, websites, blogs, and SEO, let's talk about it really fast, OK? With all the love I have for Facebook, not everybody's on Facebook. So if he's looking for a photographer, he's going to go on Google and he's going to write, uh, looking for a wedding photographer in uh, DC. And I want to show up, right? So create yourself a website, put your photos on it. Your website is your portfolio. And make sure it's optimized and searchable and findable on search engines, OK? And um, yeah. Brand your website. I accidentally cropped out my actual logo from the top, but if you look at my website when you get home and you look at my business card and you look at everything I have, my blog and the label on my studio and the packaging I offer, they're all consistent and branded. It is extremely important. You can recognize an Apple product without seeing the Apple logo, right? Because you know their brand. That's what you need to do. You don't have to be as big as Apple to create consistency in your brand, all right? Uh, make some investments in your website. It is really the storefront of your business. That's the first thing people see before they call you, before they email you, is your website. 
all right? It's like, it's like the business card that you hand. This is the first interaction. Business website is exactly the same thing. Um, make sure your website works on any platform. So for example, Flash doesn't work on any Apple products like iPad and iPhone. Flash is old. Get rid of it. You can view my website on iPad, iPhone, everything you want. OK? OK. All right. Let's talk about the hottest topic, prices. OK? I'm going to break a lot of uh, business practices and, and myths here sometime with what I say. But uh, charge what you're worth. That is extremely, extremely important. If you think you're only worth 2000 charge 2000 If you think you're worth more, and you really are, charge more. OK? There's no reason not to. I see people doing a great job charging 600 bucks. Why? Well, wh what are you doing this for? You want to be a nice person? Go volunteer in some starving country. Don't shoot weddings. You're ruining my business. OK? Um, when you build a price list, make it smart. What does that mean? Make it easy for the client to understand it. If the client has to pick up a calculator, you're doing something wrong. Don't put 99.99 .99 on it. OK? This is not 7-Eleven. Round numbers, OK? Make clients realize that if they need an upgrade, it makes more sense. Don't try to push the bigger package, the more expensive package, just because you're going to make extra few bucks. You want the client to spend the next nine months regretting getting it? Saying, how did you talk us into this 13 by 13 album? Who the hell needs it? No, let them get a 10 by 10. When they come after the wedding, show them how beautiful a 12 by 12 is. If they have some money, They'll make the decision to upgrade. So make your list smart, OK? Um, and again, price yourself for profit and for the client's benefit. If you're going to charge more, give the client more. Don't just charge more and see how you can fool them to pay more. Hey, but I'm not really giving any much. My expenses are the same. That's wrong. If you're going to charge more, give your client some more. More time, more square inch on the album, maybe an extra photographer. Maybe an extra DVD. Things with value. The best tip I can give everybody here, if you had cared and asked me, is to second shoot as long as you can. This is the photo I was telling you about. Got it as a second shooter. This is the biggest print I have in my studio. Gets the most buzz out of all the photos I have ever taken. Everybody wants to be. It set new standards, I think, in Indian weddings. Every bride I come in says, I want to look like that. This is where you can find me, guys. I have a workshops website, not just a consumer website. And uh, this is my email, Facebook, social security, blood type, everything you guys want to know. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.